Hello guys. Um, so welcome to uh first video recording of our in-class practice session, uh, which we'll be doing in uh week three. I'm just making these video recordings uh as an extra resource for anyone who wants to uh understand what we do in class uh, when we do the in-class practice sessions on our Excel. Um, obviously we'll be doing it in class and I'll be doing it live with you guys with your questions. But if someone needs more uh more time to understand or more resources. Then they can refer to these videos and um, uh, go through the steps that I'll go through uh, for the for the practice session um, and each question. And um, you can refer to this video and uh, get more clarity, hopefully. Um, so let me share my screen and start. Um, so if you go to um, the uh, Drive, uh, Google Drive folder for our course, um, you'll see a bunch of different folders. Uh, if you go to the lecture um, and 2024 20, fall, um, you'll see the in-class practice and in-class practice key. Um, so uh, you can open the in-class practice and uh, if you go to the week three cl in class practice, um, you can see a data set. Uh, and there are questions associated with the, with these data sets. So I'll be solving that in, in this in class. Um, but this is basically how the in-class practice looks like. And uh, um, what I would recommend uh, or suggest you guys do is uh, try to do the questions on your own, uh, see the data set and try to do the questions on your own and answer them. Uh, some of them will require um, you to do um, um, uh manipulation in excel uh play with the data set and try to find answers to these questions and some are theoretical questions um but uh we also have uh the key uh to this in class practice um and so you can also go through this key uh and basically it has um, the data set any other sheets that we need to create uh as as part of the exercise uh, the question answer to those questions um, and the steps required to solve the questions uh, which require Excel and different functions used in um, each of those questions. Um, so um, if you look at the data set here, so I'll be working on the uh, key sheet. Um, so what we have basically here is a data set of um, grants, uh, international intergovernmental grants by type. And basically this is uh, grants being given uh, to different governments in countries um, across different years uh, and what kind of grants they are um, and uh, the government type and the actual value of the grant. So if you see at this data set, they, it, it uh, repeats in uh, pairs of three. Uh, so like the first row here will tell you the grant type uh, in this case total, but if you go here, uh, earmark and then discretionary, um, and then, uh, the second row will tell you the government type state or, uh, local, um, and then finally your aid, uh, third row will give you the value of the grant or aid. Um, so, um, and it repeats in uh, rows of three, and then uh, there are separate columns for each of the year from 2000 to 2010. Um, now, the thing with this data set is it's very, um, it's it's easy to understand for us humans. Um, although it's it, it's a bit complex, but you can once you get a hang of it, it's it's easier to it's easy to follow. Um, you know, it's a repeating in the in a rows of uh, in pair of three. So you can see, okay, total state, uh, what's the value, earmark uh, for state, what's the value, and so on and so forth. But in uh, for, for any computer to process this uh, data set, it's, it's, it's incredibly complex. It, it, it can't deal with, you know, this uh, pair of threes. So what you ideally want is to have a row uh, for each observation where you, each row has basically the grant type, um, the government type, uh, the aid uh, value, and the year. Um, and so there should be a distinct row for each of these observations, which will make it very easy to perform analysis on this data set. Um, so what this is what we'll be doing and then answering questions based on that. But let's go to the questions first um, and see. So the first question is how many rows are in the data set? 
uh, how many columns are in the data set what is the unit of analysis um so this is your data set um there are several ways to do it uh there's there's the longer more manual way of doing it you what you can do is you can select all the data um and one easier way to select the data is you know you you click the first um cell and then you can just uh, click uh, uh control a and it will select all the data um so you can go till the end of the data and you know uh from here you can see the number of rows right uh this is 459 and then it started from row number three so it should have 457 rows and then similarly for columns um you have one two uh three four five six seven eight nine and um 11 12 13 uh, 14 columns right uh so obviously this is a smaller data set so it's easier to do it manually but then you also have like data sets where you have like uh, hundreds of thousands of rows and you know um thousands of columns so it's not that easy to uh, perform uh, the same um uh, task manually so if you go to the question um and you see the steps um uh, here, so for question number one, what you can do is you can apply some functions which will make this easier for you. So you can find the number of rows and the number of columns. Um, sorry, let me change this. So this should be rows. Um, so what you can do is you come here, question number one. Uh, so I have written the answers, but we'll do it perform it here. So uh, total number of rows in the data set are 457 as we counted manually, but there we'll do it uh, through the Excel function. So uh, we use this formula rows the sheet name and the data range. Uh, so basically, if you come here um, and you write rows, um, you basically need to uh, give a range of the cells that it needs to find number of rows from. Um, because uh, we are we are referencing a different sheet, so what you can do is you can select the sheet um, and you can select the data. Uh, so what you can do is, you can select this uh, top row or which which basically is a column header and um you can select the uh, whole data range so what it will give you is uh, basically it will give you the range of so this is this is the formula that is being written in the other sheet right so now if you go back to the sheet uh, it will it should give you the answer. So what the uh, formula basically is is um, rows and IG grants by type, which is the sheet, uh, and then data ranges from A three to um, N forty nine. Um, you can also do three to four fifty nine. It will uh, pick um, the letters itself, but it's it's better to you know uh, do it uh, specify an exact cell and, and then exact cell where the data starts and where it ends. Um, so basically it's searching from A3 till N459, uh, which is which is this, right? So it gives you the number of rows. And similarly, you can do the same thing for number of columns. So what I'll do is let, let's copy and paste this so we don't have to do uh, it again. And instead of rows, what you can do is you can do columns. And so the number of columns are 14. And the unit of analysis, you don't need a formula for that. What you do is you look here and you see, okay, so what is the unit of analysis? So you're looking at the country. This is your first, you're, you're looking at each country, right? So um, it's basically the grant type and the government type and the aid for each country in a year, right? So your unit of analysis is the country. Um, so this is your question number one, which deals with the original data set. Now, if you go to the question number two, uh, basically, uh, sorry, what it asks is what steps can you take to tidy the data? So as I mentioned, uh, your data set should be in a form where each row should represent a different observation. Um, right. So in this case, each observation is spread around, is spread out in three different rows. Like uh, you have the grant type in one row, you have the government in one row, you have the aid in one row. Um, so this is not a tidy format of data. So what you need to do is you need to convert the data set into a way where each row represents each observation. Right. So one row should have the grants type. Uh, another column for government type, another column for the aid and a column for year. Right. 
Um, and uh, so this is this is a more theoretical question. Uh, then in the next question, we'll do this actually in Excel. But for this question, we want to convert the data from wide form into long form. So wide form is basically the data being in a very wide form where you know where you have uh, columns for each different um, year, whereas you can have uh, a year in the rows uh, instead of columns. Uh, so that would convert into long form data. Right. Um, and um, um, sorry. And and so we want to create a single column for the year. So uh, so that, you know, year is in row forms. And then we also want to create three different columns to represent different grant types, government and aid values um, so that each row has uh, a single observation. Um, and then the next question, obviously, is create a tidy data set in the, in the sheet. Um, now, um, this is a complex data set. Uh, but the good thing is once you learn how to handle this data set, you can almost manipulate any data set and bring it into a form where it can be easily processed. Um, so I know it will be a bit too overwhelming at the start, uh, but if you follow the steps and if you try to understand what's happening, you will eventually figure out how to convert the data into tight data set. More important is how to know, uh, uh, not how to know, but like know what kind of uh, data set you want your data in instead of uh, the steps. Uh, if you know what kind of data set you need, you will figure out the steps. Um, so that's important that you know what kind of uh, form you want your data in. Um, so let's start with the question number three. So what you basically want to do is uh, you want to take the sheet and convert it into a tight data set, as I mentioned, where you, know, you have a column each for like grants type, government aid, and then the year. And then you have uh, all these observations in, in the row form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this uh, whole sheet. And the, it's a good thing to, you know, copy and uh, work uh, through, um, sorry, let's duplicate this sheet and uh, work on the duplicated sheet so you don't uh, mess with the original data set uh, because sometimes you transform the data set and then it's difficult to uh, bring it in a, um, in, in original format. So I'll be working on this. So what you basically need to do is, um, you need to create three different sheets where each sheet has, uh, and there's a, there's a sheet for grant type, there's a sheet for government, and there's a sheet for aid. Um, and uh, the, the way to do it is uh, basically, you want to filter out the data based on uh, grants type, government, or aid, and it will give you that. So here I've already applied the filters, but if you want to apply a filter on a sheet, what you can do is you can select all the data on which you want to apply the filter. And uh, uh, from uh, there, you can either go to data and you can either remove the filter. So this will remove the filter and this will apply the filter, right? So now what you can do is you can apply the filter and you have to select all the data because if you don't, then it will apply the filter on that column and it will not change the other data. So you want to apply it um, on all the data so that you, if when you apply the filter, it applies to the whole sheet. So what you want to do is you want to create a sheet data sheet type for grants type, right? So what you can do here is you can you can come to the data uh, filter, you can remove aid and government, and say okay. So now what it will give you, it will give you all the rows with grants type and. Um, what you can do is you can select all these, all this data, and then copy and paste into a sheet. So here I have the grants type sheet already. This is just copy pasted data from that sheet, um, right? Um, so this is your grants type sheet. Uh, similarly, you'll create a uh, sheet for uh, government type. So this time it will give you each row for the government. Um, and again, you can just select all the data, copy, paste it, copy it. And then here, paste in the government sheet, I've already pasted it. Um, and then do the same thing for aid. Um, so you select all the data and copy and paste it into a sheet, which I've already done. What, so why are we doing this is basically we're creating three different sheets. And now it's easy to create a combined sheet because if you see here, the first row will correspond to the first observation where your grant type is this total. Uh, the government type is government and uh, state. 
and the aid for that because as you remember it was working in uh, pairs of three so basically this pair of three is like you know creating sheet for each uh, row in that so uh, if you go here so um, the original data set sorry you see grants type that is the first row government type there's second row and the aid type there's the third row so this is uh, now it's corresponding the first row is a first row of each of these sheet is corresponding to the pair, this pair of three, right? Um, so now you can use this to create a tidy data sheet. And um, the way to do it is, uh, so I have it in the steps here. Uh, so first you, um, you know, you can, you can, uh, you can also sort the, uh, sort this uh, sheet into uh, sheet by country type. So, you know, like uh, you can do um, A to Z um here you can sort it which is already sorted but if if your data is not sorted then you can sort it and then apply the filter and then create three different sheets uh which uh we have already done here um and now you want to create a new sheet called tidy and copy and paste um data into that so i have the tidy data set here but i'm going to create a new sheet and show you how to do it uh in that so let's go here and then let's name it copy or tidy now uh you need to follow these steps now very carefully because uh it will it might get a bit confusing here so what you want to do is um as you come here um you see uh um, if you if you go to grant type, you see like each row now represents a, an observation. But what you want to do is now you want to add the if you if you come to the grant type sheet, you can you want to add the government to it, you want to add the aid to it, and you want to convert this uh, each year in in form of its rows, uh, in form of its rows instead of the column. So the first thing that you can do is you can copy and paste this column. So this will give you all the um, number of uh, observations for grant type, right? So you what you do is you copy this and you come here and you paste this, right? So this will give you uh, your um, a country code. And what you want to do is now you want to create a new column for year, right? And where now each year is represented. So what you do is this is, if you go to this sheet, so you have the you have this grant uh, you have this country and then if you here, come here this is your year right and for each year you 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 have the observation so now you want you want to do is um if you go here and you want to do 2000 year 2000 and now it will span across till the end right um so you can what you can do is you can just click on here and it will drag and down so this this will create the first for 2000, uh, for the year 2000, right? Now what you want to do is now you want to repeat this uh, 10 times. Now I know this is a bit of a manual labor, uh, but because how the data set is uh, given uh, here, this is something that you will need to do, right? And, um, but the good thing is you can just copy paste it again. Um, so you come here and you copy paste it. Um, and uh, you change the year again year again here so you add to you do 2001 and then um, you can drag and drop it uh, till the end and so you you repeat this why we're doing this is because and now we are can we are transforming our uh, data from uh, where you have country and then you have column for each year you instead have one column for a year and then you span it down right uh so th this is you know if you if you go here these are all the countries you know uh till 153 row and then you have each of them represented by a different year in a different column so basically you just copy pasting all of this for 2000 then stacking it below that for 2001 and 2002 um, so I'm going to, um, uh, so basically you do, you do this manual labor. Um, so again, now you change it to 2002 here. Uh, so you'll have to do some of this manually. 
uh, is just how this data set is. Uh, but it's good that you um, uh, learn it and see what, what needs to be done manually and what can be automated. Uh, so you keep doing this and here I have the tidy data sheet. So uh, ignore the three columns for now. Uh, just look at this country. And so we have it till um, 2000, 2001, uh, 2002, and it keeps going down till 2010. So you want to do this because this these are the observations that you want included in your tidy data set, right? The country and the year. And now we we'll, and we want the column for grants type, the government and the ed. And now we'll uh, figure out how to do that. But for now, you will have to copy paste uh, this these two values, the country and year, because this is what you want in your data set, right? So if you um, so come here, you you'll just copy paste it. And now what you can do is now you want uh, a separate column for your graph, grants type, your government type and your aid, right? Now, um, there's a function in um, Excel, which uh, which is called VLOOKUP. And what it does is it, given, um, given a certain value, uh, it will look up that value in another sheet and find a corresponding value to that sheet. So what you want to basically do is, you want to find what was the grant um, what was the grant type for this, uh, for when, uh, when the country was Australia and the year was 2000 and in the first row, right? So what you, what you want to pick up from here, this is why we created the sheet. So first this, uh, sheet, you come here, you look at the sheet and you want to pick up this value, right? Uh, the first row, uh, for country Australia and year 2000, the first observation, what is the first observation? That is this total, right? The second observation is year mark. So uh, ideally what you want here is that you get all these observations. Um, if you go to land, you get all these observations um, here um, in here at grants type. Now what you can do is you can also copy paste it, but uh, again, um, it's it's a tedious process. In a small data set, maybe you can do it, but it's better to apply a function for that. Um, and uh, the function that you uh, need is uh, the VLOOKUP VLOOK function. And the way VLOOKUP function works is um, you you tell it what, what cell do you want to match the value with, uh, um, the range of cells to look from, where does it want to look that value? And um, in this case, you are also matching the matching the year. So you also want to match uh, the match the year that you are looking for, and in which columns you want to match that that year from. So basically, um, let's let's apply that formula. So if you come here, and let's actually copy paste this and now replace values in this. If you come here, so you want to look at the cell, which is this cell, right? The first cell, you want to look at this or uh, Australia country that you want to look in the other sheet, right? And you want to look at from the grants uh, type sheet, right? So what you can do is you can write this grants type and then put uh, uh, exclamation and all the rows that you want to look uh, um, from, right? So you want to look from, in all these rows, right? Um, so this is, you go from A2 to N153, A2 to N 153. And um, similarly, you want to match the year, right? So, so which cell do you match for the year? You match this cell, right? And then you want to specify the columns that it wants to look for the years from. And if you go here, 
you just want to um, so let's specify the sheet grants life and you want to look in the columns uh, from this a1 to n1 right so a1 to n1 and basically this zero tells that you want an exact match um and if you don't put a zero uh, it automatically assumes uh, so if you want to specify the zero there are a bunch of values that you can give and it will find an inexact match but in this case you want the exact match right so if you put this formula uh oh yeah so there are basically uh let me check this formula Yeah, so basically you're, you're using two different functions. You're using VLOOKUP and you're also using MATCH. Uh, so there are three arguments that go into VLOOKUP. This is the cell to look uh, from, uh, the sheet to look from, and, uh, and basically you also... Um, and then you also uh, give it... Uh, basically uh what do you want to match uh the the value with um and in this case you can specify uh the um uh, the year right um and um uh, or basically you can you you need to specify um um the uh the value where where, where it needs to match right uh, so in this case you specify okay it also needs to match the match the column um uh, basically what it what what you what the third argument is the first argument is the cell that you want to look at which is this all uh, you know the first cell you want to find the value corresponding to australia in that sheet um in grants type in all the data for the grants type and now you want to tell it okay for from which column do you want the value from so if you go to the column here if you go to the sheet here um, you want the you want the value from uh, the column where the year is two thousand, uh, right? So you can either specify this column D one, um, um, and it will uh, say okay, this is the column that you want the value from. But you can also apply another function, which is the match function, because you have multiple years, so it will automatically uh, pick the year uh, from this. Uh, uh from this column and then match it uh, from f from the column where uh it will find which column has 2000 and then it will give the value from there and so this is what we are doing and so you do you that's why using two functions so the first is uh, what what cell to look at um uh, where to look from uh which column do i return the value from in that sheet um and then this false is again for exact match. So this is the fourth argument. So you have to, if you pick false, then it means it will give you exact match. If you put true, then it might give you some inexact match. So, but in this case, you want the exact match. Um, and so uh, if you click that now, why isn't it breaking? Let's see. Uh, am I losing something? Let's see. Where am I? Maybe I'm entering something wrong, but let's figure that out. Um, actually, let's just copy paste this formula. This good. Yeah, so now it will give you that um, and it will give you the answer from the first row. So if you go here, it will give you this value. So let's see if it now if we copy paste this down, it should uh, give us the values. So let's copy and paste it down. Uh, actually, let's do this. Let's dive and drop. 
if you do this. Schedules. So um, if you come here, so it will do this. Um, it will pick all the values from here till 2000. And uh, it will give you the answer. Uh, give you these values. Now, the problem with this kind of data set is that you cannot drag and drop it um, for the other years because the problem here is you are specifying it to find the value from uh, your uh, from your first row uh, to the last row, right? And the way this formula works is that if you go to the next it is now finding the value from, and it is finding the first match uh, from the data set. So if you go here, if you come here, um, there are multiple values corresponding to country Australia and year 2000, but it's going, it's giving you the first value here, right? Um, of, of the data set. So now if you want to find this value, now you ex want to, ex you have to exclude this row because now the first, if you start the data set, the range of data to look from, it needs to start from this row, right? So this will give you the first value. So this is what is happening in this case. You're changing from A2, you move to A3. And similarly, A4, A5, A6, A7. So now if you keep going down, uh, once you exhaust the year 2000, now it is going to A154, but there is no data at A154. And that is because how this data is arranged, right? If the data, oh, sorry. And, and it's because uh, the uh, data is um, arranged in this way uh, that it has separate columns for the years. And this is why this is a very complex type of data uh, arrangement. And usually it's not very friendly for computers. So now it will require some manual work. And what you need to do is um, you need to um, basically um, copy and paste this formula again, um, and then change, uh, basically the, change the range again. So if you come here, you, you can copy and paste this formula, come here to the 2001, and again, put like A, from A2 to, it was N153, right? Um, and here you do, B154, and now you can again drag, drag and drop it down for this year, for 2001. And if you do that, Um, so you can do this and then again, repeat the same process. Um, and um, you, yeah, so you can just repeat the same process again and um, you keep doing that. Um, so similarly for the government, you're going to do the same thing. Uh, you are going to use the same formula um, and actually you can just copy and paste the formula from here. It's it's very similar formula. So you come here, you apply this, and here you instead of the sheet grants type, now you are looking at the government type, and you do government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and then you can just drag and drop. Uh, okay. I don't know why it gives me this suggestion. Yeah. So, yeah. So you copy and paste this and then you do the same procedure again. Again, if you come to 2001, it will not give you any value. So you take this formula and you can copy and paste it here. 
and then or actually what you can do is you can you, this formula is already there you can just change the value here and you can start from and and you can copy and paste this and you can drag and drop to again the end of 2000 but it will only give you the values till 2001 and you keep repeating this process um and now finally you want to get the eight numbers so you do the same thing for the eight sheet but in this case now you're looking at numbers um and you also want to put a filter that if you come to this eight sheet um there are certain um values where there's a number is missing right so where the number is missing uh, you want to specify in your formula that it should put n a where the number is missing so for that uh what you would do is you would pick the formula so i'll uh, i have the formula here so you will also apply this uh condition on the formula that is number and what basically that does is if it is a number uh then it will give you uh that then it will apply this value this uh basically um it will search that if it is a number it will keep this v lookup um and will try to find the number and it will give you the number if if uh, the rows don't have a number um then um you would have um it as n a if the number is uh you know if the, if the value is zero then um if it, it will give you n a so um basically this is what it is uh doing um so we'll just copy and paste this formula and apply it here so basically you're also applying this if condition and is number uh, basically where it is looking that if it is giving a number or not um and uh so you get this and then you can again drag and drop it down and it will keep going and so here you see like this value for japan 2000 um there should there there's this value where it is zero right so let's check that um you see japan here this is the value and it is zero so it's basically picking up that value and uh, for for the sorry for the aid here um and it's giving you uh that value of zero uh any right um so um whenever whenever you're up whenever you're pulling numbers from somewhere you want to apply this na condition because otherwise it will give you an error for text it will automatically pick up the na um uh, wherever a value is missing but for uh but wherever you want a number um you might want you might want to apply this uh, condition right um and so you do the same thing again for this eight so if you go down uh, and you if you go till uh, 2000 um it will give you the number but then here because it's picking up values from here where it is going till this row um 153 and then the, how the formula works it is searching from n154 and it is blank so it's giving you na but that's not the correct answer right so you want to take this formula and change the numbers uh change the uh basically change uh, these uh um values again so you want to start from a2 to um n n2 and then similarly uh a2 to n2 and then you can again copy paste and then drag and drop and you repeat the same thing again and uh, for all the years so I've already done that in this tidy sheet. So what you get here is, and then finally, once you have all the data, um, you can convert this uh, column into currency and then keep two decimal places. So now here's what it looks like, right? So you have all the countries um, 
and then you have all the years you go till 2010 and you have the grants type uh you have the government type and you have the aid type um and i'm applying the same formula and i'm just repeating the formula uh for each year so this is something manual that you have to do um and um this is this is a very complex data set i'm telling you like this you you don't usually see data set in this form um and so this requires like a lot of cleaning uh, which usually isn't required for data sets because they are in a good format. But this is also good that, you know, you can understand, okay, how to transform data set. So essentially knowing that you need a data set where you have each uh, row representing the country, the year, the grant type, the government type, and uh, the actual value of aid, uh, that is important. And now you can do a lot of analysis on this kind of sheet. Whereas you cannot do a lot of analysis on the other type of sheet. Um, and if you if you look at this data, uh, you can even further refine it because you can see that the way this is represented is um, now um, the there's there's the earmarked that was for the aid. Uh, um, and then what was the disbursement and discretionary spending? So they match each other because this was earmarked and then it was dispersed and then there was non earmarked some some of it was dispersed without which wasn't even earmarked and then this is the total right um but you have once you have the formula once you have the sheet in this format you can e easily transform it into where uh, you can find out okay uh, what is the total for each government type and then what is the um, what is the total for earmark? What is the total for discretionary? Um, so you can even further refine it, but getting into this form uh, format of table is um, is itself like refining the table uh, very well and preparing it for further data analysis. So this is what your tidy sheet looks like. And then uh, let's, uh, so we've created this tidy sheet and we've done all these steps um, and uh, we we do that so now let's go to question number four so now it's saying are there any missing values for the variable aid in this data set um and if you come to the data set basically what it's asking for are they missing any missing values and those values are na because as we applied the formula uh if there was some value that was missing in that sheet if it was a blank then we said that put na right so what we want to do is we want to count the number of nas now again there are multiple ways to do it uh one way to do it is you know you go here and um you can find um go to the end and you can just keep the na and remove all uh other values right uh so let's say you clear all and then you select na so it will give you just the na values right and you can say okay there are um uh, eight values right one two three four five six seven eight right uh that is one way um uh, you clear the value uh let's sorry select all again and then you get the sheet again um or you can do you know you can search manually through this there's one way but then there's also a function for it right and um, that function is basically um you 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 can count um the number of NAs and you can also say if there is an NA. So in this first question, uh, in the first part, it's just, sorry, it's just asking you, uh, are there any missing values? Not asking you to count. It's just asking, are there any missing values? So uh, the one way you could have done is, you know, you just go to the sheet here, see the filter, go till the end of this filter and see if there's any, yes, there's any, that means there are missing values. But uh, the other way is you can apply this, you can apply a formula. So you, what you do is you apply a formula that count if, uh, and count if basically counts if given a condition. So from count if from in this tidy sheet, um, so let's apply, actually let's apply this formula from scratch. Um, so, so when you apply the formula if, you tell it, that if a certain condition is fulfilled, then give me an answer. And if it if that condition is not fulfilled, then give me an answer. So the first first you put the condition right. So the condition you can put is you can use another function for it, which is count if. 
uh, that if there are and in count if now you are specifying what kind of uh, values do you want to count, right? So, and from where do you want to count it? So you tell, you want to count it from tidy sheet, right? And you want to count it uh, in this uh, column A, right? So you want to count it from this first row till the last row, which is E163, right? Um, and so you come here into the formula, sorry. And you can say E2 to E1673. So you want to count it from that and you want to count only the number of NAs. And now, Basically, it's counting the number of NAs. And now if the condition is true, that if the count is more than one, then give me the answer, yes. But if the count is zero, or if the condition is not fulfilled, then give me the answer, no. And I'm um, sorry, I think maybe we have to use parentheses for this. Yeah. So now you get the answer that yes, there are some NAs which we have counted. So you get the answer here, right? Um, and then for the second part, uh, for question number four, we, uh, uh, how would you count the zero values in variable? Uh, sorry. So the so part B is how would you count the zero values? Now, if you come here to the eight part, uh, the tidy sheet you can see that there are some values as I showed, which were Z, which were NA, right? But there are some values which are zero, but that doesn't mean that a value is missing, right? It, it could just mean that uh, no, no aid or grant was given, right? So the value, no amount of money was given. So that is a zero value. So it doesn't mean that a value was missing. It is possible that in the data value was missing and they put zero for that. But for now we assume that it is, uh, it is an actual amount of zero that no aid was given instead of a missing value. So we answer the question accordingly that uh, I would interpret as uh, saying zero of that specific type of aid was received. This is different than an observation that was not taken at all, like the NA where it was blank, right? Um, and then uh, question number four, see how many missing values are in aid uh, data set? and indicate the result as a single number and as a percentage of the total number of values. Uh, actually, let me just remove the answer. So if you come here, um, the other, uh, so as, 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 as we did, as we did here, uh, if you remove this if condition because you wanted an answer that are there any missing values or not, if you remove this and you just use this count if uh, to count the number of NAs, you should get the um, number of, oh, sorry. You should get the number of values uh, that are NA in that column. So count if from this tidy data set uh, column uh, from these all these rows in eight column, uh, the column E uh, corresponds to eight column and uh, count only the NA values. So if you put this formula, you get eight, right? And now what you want to do is, uh, what it's saying is you just want to count the number of, uh, as a percentage, right? So you want the number of NA values divided by the total number of values. So what you can do is you can use the formula. So um, you can use actually this, uh, the formula to count Uh, the number of missing values and the total number of values, you can just say rows and uh, you go to ID and you can um, put E2 to E1673. Um, so this will basically, it will calculate all the rows that are um, in, in that data set or all the all the values in the aids in the aid column basically which is also all the number of value or all the number of rows right mm -hmm. and uh, so this will give you the percentage and you can just multiply this by 100 to get the percentage so 0.48 percent of uh 
the values are um sorry are missing right uh so the percentage of values missing are uh of uh, uh 0.48 um because the your total number of values uh so if we come here let's also calculate the total number of values which we said was id e2 to e1673 so 1672 these were the to your total number of values in aid column and eight of them are missing. So that corresponds to 0.48% of the missing values, right? Uh, and then finally, let's go to question number five. Uh, it's saying, um, fill out the code book for each variable in the tidy data set below. Uh, for continuous variables, write the unit of measurement. Uh, so basically, um, we have the uh, we have to have all the variables in the tidy data set. So variables are basically your columns. Uh, so your this is your country type. That's one variable. Year, one variable. Grants type, government, and aid. Right. Um, so, what is the description? So the country is basically unique country code or unique ID for each country. Year is the calendar year. Grants type is basically type of intergovernmental uh, uh, grants. Uh, um, the total earmark, discretionary non earmark. Uh, government. What is the level of government? Is it uh, local or state. Uh, and in this case, there's also a total where you're adding up state and local and then aid, uh, which is basically the amount. And, uh, so what is the type of variable here? Um, uh, country is nominal, uh, because there's like, you know, um, it's, a uh, it's different categories. Um, uh, year is interval, uh, because as you say, as you see, like 2001, 2002, 2003, that's, uh, uh when there are, different categories and number it's interval uh the grants type again is nominal their categories uh and government is also nominal um and then um uh, aid um is uh what is the amount of intergovernmental aid received so it shouldn't be ratio sorry it should be like uh continuous uh which is continuous in terms of number right and the unit of measurement uh, for these, uh, for for your uh, nominal variables, there's no unit of measurement that doesn't apply. It only applies for numerical uh, variables. So this, in this case, uh, for year, it's uh, um, one year is the unit of measurement. And for the aid, because we have the aid here, it should be dollar, but uh, yeah, it should be dollar because we are not, uh, no, actually, it shouldn't be dollar because we're using the cents, right? Because in some cases, there's, you know, the, the number is going till cents, you know, 0.91. Um, so um, it's not dollar one. It should be dollar 0 0.01, right? Mm, yeah. So it should be, that's like your uh, smallest unit of measurement, right? So this is your unit of measurement. And that answers all the questions. Um, so you have the steps here for each of the questions that we solved in Excel. Um, and uh, here are the functions associated with this uh, uh, that we use for each question. And then uh, these functions are, uh, they have a link. So you can open the link and read more about these functions um, on Excel uh, website. Um, the Microsoft support website for Excel functions. Uh, so each function has its link associated. So you can open and uh, read about the functions. Uh, you can go over the steps and uh, you can replicate uh, this whole process by yourself. Uh, what I would suggest is create a copy of uh, the original sheet uh, because um, if I show you here, if I remove all the filters, it here uh, so right now it's uh you it's gotten back into its original shape but sometimes you might do some sorting or processing and it might not go back to the original shape so try to create a copy of it and uh and then um um and then work through that copy uh, so you keep the original data set intact um uh, and then um as for this you know we created three different copies 
and then uh, we also had the tidy uh, so i'm going to delete these uh, copies for now so if you're doing um and going through the um key yourself then it doesn't confuse you uh, but basically this was the whole in class practice session uh, i'll be doing this in the class also um and if you are um, watching this after the class then um, um if you have any questions then you can um, email me um, and we can go through but i hope this video makes everything clear and uh, it's easy for you to understand and follow and the steps and the key that I, that we've given here uh, makes things easy for you uh, so thank you for uh, listening and um, i hope this helps thank you again and bye